Hello, this is John Dominguez. I am an application engineer at Mori Microwave. In this presentation, I'm going to explain the low frequency stability issues affecting large signal measurements and give some recommendations to stop low frequency related oscillations. This is the second presentation of a how to improve measurement reliability series. RF transistors are designed and optimized for very high frequencies. Therefore, they have a large gain in the low frequency region. A feedback from output to input in addition to very high gain can trigger an oscillation. Therefore, it is essential to control the response of the transistor in the low frequency region. There are several feedback loops in a device under test or measurement setup that we previously explained in the first presentation. It is obvious that we cannot change the device under test's physical structure, such as drain gate capacitance and bonding wires in the package. However, it is possible to prepare an improved measurement setup to control some of the feedback loops to avoid oscillations. In this presentation, we will focus on the low frequency response of a transistor and how to control it. In this slide, we will explain the low frequency response of a transistor using a basic amplifier structure. A traditional RF amplifier consists of four blocks, input matchmaking, input biasing network, output biasing network, and the output matching network. Assume that this amplifier is for the gigahertz frequency range and the values of the DC blocking capacitors at the input and output matching networks are in the picofarads range. This means we can ignore the matching networks since we are analyzing the transistor in the low frequency region up to a few hundred megahertz. The RF bypass capacitors are ideal. Their capacitance values are infinite, essentially shorting the signals at the drain biasing point. The gate source capacitance has a very small value and may be ignored for low frequency analysis. Therefore, the amplifier circuit can be simplified to a basic network having drain gate capacitance, current source, and a biasing inductor. Again, recall that this is a simplification for low frequency operation. If we calculate the impedance seen from the transistor's gate and its real part is negative, then yes, this is correct as RF transistors have a negative impedance at low frequency regions. Please refer to the sources below for more information. In the previous slide, we observed that the real part of the input impedance is negative in the low frequency region. If we extend our analysis by including a regular biasing network having a serial resistor and an ideal RF bypass capacitor, this additional network changes the real part of the input impedance dramatically. Now, it is almost equal to the value of the resistor. This equation is applicable for a resistor value that is not very small or very large. In the right hand figure, we summarize the analysis. The blue line indicates the real part of the input impedance without a biasing network. The red line reveals the input impedance with a biasing network and clearly results in a positive value and is nearly equal to the resistor's value for a wide range. In this particular analysis, a 10 ohm resistor was used. The black line demonstrates a resonance that may occur with the realistic component values and poor design. In summary, a suitable and well-designed input biasing network can prevent negative resistances at the input and is an important improvement for the design. With this in mind, you may see a potential issue Adding a resistor into a design is possible for a designer. However, if measuring a single transistor using a probe station, there is a limited opportunity to change the setup equipment. Let's take a look at how we can adapt this measurement setup to improve low frequency stability. If measuring with continuous DC, we can implement additional components to the bias T's. For example, we can use an additional network to the input biasing consisting of a serial resistor and a capacitor bank having nanofarad and microfarad value shunt capacitors. 
This network will provide a resistive termination in the low frequency range for the input of the device under test as mentioned in previous slides. It is also recommended to have a capacitor bank at the output bias T. If using a cable extension for the current probes, pulsed RF measurements can still be performed. It is essential to place this cable after the capacitors. Here, we can see one of our own small circuit designs. It has several capacitors in the picofarad, nanofarad, and microfarad values. There is also a serial RC network to avoid resonances. This additional network provides a reduced impedance in the low frequency range for the drain biasing. In this slide, we demonstrate part of an active load pool measurement setup in our lab where we observe the output configuration. It is also suitable for pulsed RF measurements. In this setup, we use shielded and short coaxial cables for the DC supply. A small capacitor bank is included in the DC input of the bias T to improve low frequency stability. If there is an oscillation in the low frequency region, there are some easy and effective solutions that can be applied to prevent this oscillation. Use short and shielded cables for biasing. Ensure that there is no coupling between the input and output biasing networks. Use isolated power supplies. Change the bias T's. Try different brands or models as they could be causing a resonance in the low frequency region due to its internal components. All limited band passives, such as circulators, filters, and diplexers can cause resonances or poor isolation. Depending on your measurement setup, you can try reflectionless filters, wider bandwidth circulators, or wideband terminations. Thanks for watching. For more information about our solutions, please check our webpage at moraymicrowave.com.